Hello and welcome to New Forest Morphs. Today we're going to be talking about the banana gene, which is also known as a coral glow gene. And it was founded in 2002 uh, by two different breeders. One of them was uh, Kevin McCurley at NERD, who first produced um, the coral glow. And he imported an animal from Africa and bred it through and was able to produce that. And I've got an example of a banana or coral glow, um, which is Cleo. Uh, she's a banana spider. So you can see that the combination of the two together produce an amazing snake. You can see the lovely white patterns underneath, um, which is basically the spider gene doing that. And then the banana pattern you can see here. So this is our f first, one of our first girls that we bought from Southampton Reptiles. And she has given us one egg last year and a lovely baby, which is a banana. So I'll show you what a banana looks like in a single gene by showing you her baby. And then um, she was put to one of our pied. So we produced a banana pied baby. So if you're happy to hold on to her for a second, then Mandy. Mandy's our camera lady today. You can hold on, I'll just go and get a baby. So her baby is called Bingo. And then you can see there she is. And that is what a banana looks like. Now it was a lot brighter when it first hatched. A lot brighter when it first hatched, but it has faded a little bit. And we had problems feeding this one. And it was stuck in shed for about six weeks. It's just come out of shed now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put it on the table and I'll just take the mum around my neck. So Claire's gonna come and join me. Come on, Claire. She's going under the table. Right, let's put Claire up on my neck. There we go. So, <laughs> she loves to come out and play, this one. So, while she's playing, I'll, I'll be able to show you this lovely baby now. So, this is Bingo, and we believe it's, uh, I think Jad thinks it's a girl. And she's 100% het for pied. Can you see the lovely colours on it? Can you see the oranges in her? And the purples. And if you look at the purple on her markings there, let see her, her mouth's a bit purple. But a beautiful snake. And we're very grateful to have a baby banana in our collection and really, really cute. And the banana's a lovely, lovely gene. So any ideas, Mandy, why we um, why we call the banana, banana? Just look the banana card, I think. Yes. <coughs> and do you know what happens to a banana as it grows? Or as it's... Brown spotty. Brown spotty, it does. So what you'll find, um, if I just put the baby down here, I'll just show you on Cleo. You'll see she's got a few black spots. They're not mites or anything. If you look at Cleo. You see there's some black spots on her. So, because she's got these black spots, they often call them bananas, because obviously a mature banana goes black. In 2002, but the banana gene was found around about the same time by a guy called Will Slough, and he called it banana. Now at one point they thought they were two separate genes, and they could, could well be. But um, what we found over the years is that you can put a coral glow with a banana. You put them together, you can get a super coral glow or super banana. They're compatible. So a lot of breeders think that it's two names for the same gene. And they also believe that this one gene is slightly more, um, I think the coral glow has um, slightly more purples and it glows more than the banana. And that's probably why it's called coral glow. So I think the way we look at it is like, you know we did the video on the lessers last weekend and we had the platinum lesser with the butter. Well, I think again, they're the same gene we believe, but two separate lines, one showing a different color to the other. And I think it's probably true to say with the coral glow and the banana, the same gene, but two separate lines within the gene is what um, most people believe. And of course, because so many people have bred them now, it's difficult to get a pure strain of each gene. Uh, to see if there's much difference because a lot of them have all been crossbred. Many people do um, separate them, but most people uh, breed them together. So it is a co dominant gene. That means that you'll get 
If you put a banana to a normal, 50% will become banana, 50% will be normal. And there is a super form called a super banana. And with a super banana, you get slightly less speckling, but you get a much um, faded um, snake. It starts to fade. It's probably more like bingo, actually, than a super. Now, he isn't a super, he's a normal. But you can see he's starting to fade a little bit. He was much brighter as a baby, and I'll put a picture of him up when he was a baby, and you'll see how he's faded a little bit there. So, we do have some other bananas in our collection. And, but before we do that, I wanted to talk about um, one unique characteristics of the banana. And the thing that they found really interesting is that there's a sex link to the banana gene. And I'll explain what that means. Now, obviously, us as humans, who determines the sex of our babies, Mandy? Me or you? Um, male. The male. So, the way it works is that the bull python works the same way as humans. So the male normally produces the sex of the animal. So the male will carry an X and a Y chromosome, and the female will cover, she'll carry two X chromosomes. So when you put a male with a female, there's normally a 50% chance that you're going to get a boy and a 50% chance you're going to get a girl. And that's true of most other genes. But with the banana gene, there's something very unusual going on. And what they found is they found that the XY chromosome on the male sits on the same point of the banana gene itself. So if you imagine, there's a really nice video here. If you want to learn how this works, um, Richard at Predator BP invited a friend, Rob, uh, from Royal Bulls to do a video on uh, the banana gene and to explain the genetics. And he used a square and he used some pink and blue um, pipe cleaners and he used some blue and yellow discs and he showed um, the genetics of how the banana gene works. of how the banana gene works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer you to that video if you want to look at the detail, but I'll try and explain the basics as far as I understand. It is very complicated and I'll try not to complicate it too much, but this is how it works. So most male banana bull pythons are male makers. They produce mainly males. I think 90, between 90% 90 and 94% of every egg that's hatched is a male. Now you think, well, how can that be? Because normally it's 50-50. It's because the male has the um, X and Y chromosome is right on the gene. So when it produces a banana, so if you put a, a male make a banana to a female normal, you would find that any banana that it produces is normally a male because the male gene and the banana gene are on the same point. So when they transfer the gene across to the next generation, not only does it take the banana, it takes the Y chromosome with it to produce a male. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. So if you do this 100 times, you might find any, any, anywhere between one and five um, females will, will be produced. So you might be asking, is it gonna be really hard to get hold of a female? Well, female bananas are worth their weight in gold because they are quite hard to get hold of because of the male makers. Most of the bananas out there are male makers. So when you, when you breed with a banana, you're gonna produce a lot more males than females unless you select a particular male that is a female maker. 
And you might be saying, how can a male be a female maker? Well, let me explain what happens. So, if you have a male maker banana that you breed to a female banana, and she produces a male banana, then that male banana, because the mother was a female banana, will carry an X chromosome on the banana gene. Which means that the male, when he's bred in the future, he will only produce XX bananas rather than XY bananas because his banana gene is sitting on the X chromosome. That makes sense. <laughs> so, the rule is 90% plus of all banana males are male makers and a small percentage are female makers. And the way you differentiate is if you're buying a male banana, you ask the breeder who bred it, was the, was, was the parent a female banana or was it a male banana? If he turns around and says it came from a female, female banana, you've got a male that's a female maker. So the next generation produce, every banana it produces will be a female banana. So they're worth their weight in gold. So that's probably hugely confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, you've done biology, so it might not be as confusing for you, but maybe I haven't explained it very well. But what I've done is I've, um, I've put up a few slides as to how it all works, and I'll refer you to the video that Predator BP put out with Rob's help. And maybe have a look at that video if you want to get your head around it. It's very confusing. But while we're here, what I wanted to do is just show you a few of our animals and maybe go through a few combos. But first, why don't we put a little baby into the lighthouse and see how she looks, shall we? Okay. I'm sure we can see that one. She lovely. And you can zoom in on that as well. I have a little now. Right, right now we'll put the mother in, and so you can see the mother and how she looks in the lighthouse. Yeah, in the lighthouse now. Hopefully, she'll. Uh, you'll see the banana colours in here. They're absolutely gorgeous. Well, there we go. <laughs> now Cleo's got all her body weight back. She weighs about two kilograms now, and we'll just put her in a ball. And then if you want to get in there and have a little look. I'm going to go Mandy, have a quick look at her. So. Yeah. Right. There we go, isn't that beautiful? Isn't she lovely though? Look at her beautiful patterns and colours. And she's actually, for an adult, is actually behaving herself quite well. But the spider and the banana mixed together are gorgeous. Just look at that. Beautiful, beautiful colour. And see, she's produced her first baby for us, and hopefully this year um, she'll produce another clutch for us. So she's doing well. And I think we'll slip her back, Mandy. Do you want to take the camera? Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you very much. We'll just slip her back. So this clears home here, and then I'll show you a few other bananas that we've got, a few other combos. Um, let's introduce you to our beautiful male, who's an orange dream banana, and he's a super pastel orange dream banana, and he's locking up to a lot of our girls at the moment. Okay, so Jad and I are just checking some locks, Jad. Which ones are locking? Can you see and just shut. So we've got the banana and the canico, that's their second lock. And he's a star, isn't he? Look, there's, there she is. So it's quite an unusual lock, isn't it? <laughs> it's difficult to see what's going on there. His head's here in the way. It's not, not disturbing. Yeah. See the lock oh, yeah. Yeah, put it. Thank you, Jeff. Right. We're putting them back in peace. They're, they're happy locking. So, banana, calico, super pastel, orange dreams coming. Are they locking? Yeah. Cookie's locking again. Just a lot of our Wonderful. girls at the moment. And here he is. He's only got a few spots because the orange dream tends to restrict the amount of spots that a banana can get. And the super pastel also acts as a cleanser. And this fella is called Apollo. He's been a real star. And I'll show you in the light box again what he looks like. Pass me the camera. 
isn't he gorgeous just look at that what a beautiful animal so an orange dream super pastel banana male and he's absolutely gorgeous you can see what the pastel does to his head blushes that out and look at the lovely colors and tones on him he's got some beautiful oranges purples yellows and I think he's lovely and what the pastel does it creates more of a bounded banded look so if you look at his body patterns can you see the bands on him and that's what the pastel does and because he's got a double dose of pastel the whole thing seriously pops and I'll uh, show you some of the locks he's been up to this season he's locked everything I've put him to he's gone to about three girls and he locks every single time he's just gone off food so he weighs about 950 grams and now he knows he's breeding he just hasn't eaten for two weeks and I think he's just so concentrating on breeding for us but he's got a lovely temperament he's a beautiful animal and I'm very pleased with him he's just such a beautiful animal just look at that head stamp isn't that gorgeous he's got a nice peaceful temperament as well so overall I think he's a beautiful beautiful animal Right, let's put him back and then I'll show you one more banana. Let's have a look. Yeah, it was from Marco. Super, this one's a super pastel banana G-stripe. His name's Giovanni. Let's see if he'll come out and play with us. And he's up to, he's almost big enough to breed now. Just have a look at that, isn't he lovely? So the super pastel gives him the blushing, white blushing. And this G-stripe is a perfect example of a G-stripe because the stripe on the dorsal is completely there's no broken part to it it's, it's absolutely complete from head stamp all the way down to tail and we'll put him in the the lighthouse and see how he looks okay there we go he's just exploring his territory beautiful animal so you can see the super pastel reduces the spots down to he's got one or two possibly maximum and I think he's decided to go <laughs> under the mat here let me see if I can pull him out into the middle again that's it let's see if he'll go in there if I can get him into a ball would be ideal <laughs> there we go there we go there we go he definitely, definitely wants to move. He's a fast mover at the moment. I don't think he doesn't like the light in here, so we'll pull him out and perhaps we'll get him in the natural light, shall we? There he is. What do you think of him, Andy? Beautiful. Yeah, he's a real star. We're gonna plug him in. We've got a G-stripe female. Now the G-stripe is a recessive gene, but I like what the banana and G-stripe do together and you can see that uh, the g-stripe removes all his patterns so he's now just a pure banana he looks more like a banana with a stripe down its back so i like him very much so we shall start plugging him in the next few months as soon as the girls are ready and that's giovanni so he's our final banana i wanted well there is actually one of the banana that's in shed i can show you her it's a female Palmer. and that would be Palmer. yeah Well, he wants to stay out. I wonder if he wants to stay on my neck for a bit. I'll let him play for a little bit, I think. So Korma is just over here. There we go. Now she's in shed. Now there's an example of a banana with freckling. Can you see the freckles on that, Andy? It's quite amazing, isn't it? If we come around from this side, get a much better view of him here. And then you can see just look at those lovely patterns and colours there. Look, can you see the purples in her? So this is a pastel. Uh, this is a pastel um, banana. And look at the purples. Just look at the lovely colours that she's got in there. And she's in shed at the moment. So when she shed, shed out, she'll look even better. And she weighs about 1,100 grams. So we're going to keep building her and see whether she's ready to go toward the tail end of the season. If not, it'll be next year. But you can see she's got a pastel head, head blushing in the head there. Not as strong as Giovanni, because Giovanni's a super pastel. 
but she's nonetheless a very very pretty animal and uh, yeah she's growing fine she's nailing uh, small rats at the moment and she's in an adult rub so we'll keep on seeing how she progresses but a lovely lovely animal right Mandy should we put Giovanni back now and there's Giovanni yeah we'll slip him back he wants to play doesn't he <laughs> some of these animals just don't want to go back they want to stay out and play for a bit but <laughs> there we go. Uh, so it's a co-dominant gene. There's a super form called a super banana we spoke about. The genes to take out the spots, there's lots of genes you can put in there. Some people love the freckling spots, other people want to, a cleaner banana. So if you want to clean up the gene, you use things like pastel, orange dream, yellow belly, leopard. Uh, what else have we got in here? Enchi is a very good cleanser, so if you use an Enchi gene, that's fantastic. And I will show you what an Enchi banana clown looks like. Clown is absolutely gorgeous. Banana clown looks like. Clown is absolutely gorgeous. So if you start putting banana clowns, banana pies, these are the things. Banana clowns, banana pies, these are the things that Jared and I want to do on here in New Forest Morphs. Is we want to take those banana genes and put them into the pied and I'll show you what a banana pied looks like and then we'll also put them into the clown gene and I'll show you what the clown looks like. You put Enchi, yellow belly, leopard, banana clowns, leopard, banana clowns are absolutely stunning, really really beautiful. Stunning, really really beautiful. Um, so one of the things can we say when the banana first came on the market in 2003 it would cost you $25,000 for a pair that was the price at that time now you can pick up a banana for a couple hundred pounds and you could probably ask the question what happened to the price from 2003 to now for that price to drop so much and I think the key here was that um, when they first brought out the banana gene or the coral glow gene there wasn't enough males. I mean, a lot of the breeders were holding on to the males, and the males, there weren't enough males to produce lots of banana genes, so they couldn't be plugged into all their females. And so it was supply and demand. So there was demand outstripped supply, therefore the price went up. But as soon as they unlocked the male makers and they realized that you can produce male makers, and there was more males that were then sold on the market. That led to a flooding of the market and the price dropped. Now there's a lot of people that went into the um, ball python market. And the ball python market was very buoyant in the beginning. And when the banana gene came in, people could see the opportunity to um, get into that gene. And obviously uh, it did wonders to bring people into the hobby. But unfortunately when it crashed, a lot of people lost quite a lot of money where they didn't recover their $25,000 because the snakes were falling so quickly with the flooding of all the animals coming in. So quite a few people came out of the hobby and they were just disappointed and gutted. They thought that they would be able to get their money back on the investment and they never did. And I think that was a time when the bull python market did take a crash and people's confidence dropped in, dropped down. But since then, we've noticed that there's been a much slower, steadier pickup of the market because recessives mixed with the codoms like bananas and others um, are starting to show more buoyancy and the prices began to come back into vogue because people like to see some of their codoms mixed in with the recessives which are much harder to hit and therefore there wasn't a flooding of the market because people wanted these beautiful recessive genes mixed with their favorite codoms of which banana is one of the most favorite codoms out there um, and the market has brought back the value of the banana mixed with the recessives so it's interesting how the bull python history has gone. Uh, people were making lots of quick money on codoms, then it crashed, and then the long-term breeders brought the market back by showing us that recessives mixed with codoms is the way to go. It's a much more secure uh, investment, secure market for, for breeders. So I hope that gives a little bit of background. So I will leave you with a few pictures of some of the co uh, codoms. I'll also leave you with a few slide shots of Richard and Rob's video on the genetics of male makers, female makers, and how that all works. It is quite confusing, and I probably haven't done it justice <laughs> as a beginner, someone trying to understand myself. But please have a look at their videos, and I'm sure you'll be able to 
with time work it out and how it all works out but um thank you for watching and we will see you next time goodbye for now